Hey, hello, hello, everyone. Hello, good evening. Let's get this party started. This is Curology Live. Praise the Lord, Curology Live. And we are here to make sure that we all are recipients of the power of God for health, for life, for all of His goodness. The Bible says all the promises of God are yes, yes and amen. And find their amen in us. So be it. So be it. Everybody says, so be it unto me. <laughs> so I love that. It. I love that about the word of God. I don't know where uh, you are all watching from, either live or uh, later on in the recording, but we're, we welcome you. We want to let you know that after uh, Pastor Tracy and I teach on healing, faith, whatever it is that the Lord has put in our hearts, <laughs> Um, we want you to know that we also have Zoom healing rooms, and I actually need to make sure I check and see if we have any spots left in our messages yeah, from our staff. Right let us know. No openings this, uh, okay, this week. We've been really, really packed in our healing rooms, which is good news on the one hand, but also uh, we're working very hard behind the scenes um, to train more healing technicians and you know you can only do that so fast <laughs> yeah, yeah and if you want to be one then you have to go through the training yes reformers school of ministry yeah, okay reformers. and uh, <laughs> yes <laughs> right now that is anyway so whatever else you add that's that's no, up to know. you <laughs> I look I look for a minister Carol to tell me what to do right that's what she's doing well, right she, now she's telling me what to do oh she's training reformers mm -hmm. reformers and the reformers are training new new technicians so we're very excited to uh, increase but we want to let you know that um, there's a miracle at the end of this this teaching for you we believe that for spirit soul and body and so if you want to make an appointment uh, next for next week you can text the word healing to 206 567 1400 so that's exciting what? I just think we're going to need a fast track. Oh, yeah. Well, that's administration. We can do that. That's not <laughs> I'm, but I, but I, but I want But I want to talk to these people for a second just okay. for a fast track. There is going to be a need for everyone listening to get in the fast track of whatever God has for your life, to go faster, mm -hmm. to speed it up. Speed it up. If you're supposed to be in school, don't put it off for another year. Get in school. I mean, well, you may miss it now, but, you know, try to get, try to beg. We've had someone beg and plead to get in at different times where, like, this, no, we've already started. But I please, please, I have to, because there is an urgency in the earth. And I know that a lot of people are not seeing and recognizing the urgency, but there is definitely an urgency in the earth that we need to equip more people. And we're not even having an intake for reformers right now, so I'm, I'm not making this this for the sake of, hey, join reformers. The church, the body of Christ, the kingdom of God needs more people yeah. that are actively working in the ministry, doing ministry stuff, <laughs> giving giving the kingdom of God your fullness so that we can give the kingdom of the dark, darkness our fullness and so we can manifest. So I, this is my recruiting to just get on board with fighting. Yeah, Become a fighter. Don't become a victim. Don't allow. I hear so much victim every day. I'm on phone calls with people. I'm like, man, we're not victims of this. Yeah. We are literally, we are the only answer that God has. And yeah. and if he can't use us, I'm not sure, you know, we can wait another 10, 15, 20 years. Can you imagine if he can't pick anybody in this generation to actually get busy? He has to wait another 15, 20 years to let people die off in the wilderness so that he can now raise up a generation that's going to stop the Pharaoh and it's going to stop the works of yes. darkness. So we just have to get busy. And so this is my plea. This is my plea, uh, my beg, my petition. Please, in the name of Jesus, let's go. Yeah. Let's get some stuff done. All Amen. hands on deck. All hands on deck. That's my. Yeah. There's an urgency. Thank you, people. There's yes. an urgency. Thank you, Lindsay. Thank you, Donna Mullaney. Urgency, urgency, urgency. More active sons and daughters. Let's go, Carolyn. Let's go. Punch fist, fist, fist. Carolyn says, fist, Minister fist. Minister Carolyn. <laughs> Minister. Thank you. I agree. Punch Let's it go. In the face. We have to go quickly. And I'm telling you, I'm feeling such an urgency in the spirit that we aren't working as hard as we should be. At least that's me. I feel like I'm not working hard. I feel like I'm kind of on cruise control. 
Oh, so wow. I need to get busy. Well, if you are, then everyone else is on vacation because you're busy every day, <laughs> except for Sabbath, kind of. You're kind of busy on, on Sabbath. We have we have an end time Sabbath going on right now. I know. <laughs> it's the end time Sabbath. Yes, I need to still take my Sabbath, even though it is the end times. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. Well, well, Praise that doesn't help at That's all. That's not helpful. No. So uh, what we uh, want to do is uh, release the word of the Lord to you. And the word of God is a powerful thing because the word of God is not information necessarily. It is an impartation. It's a creative force. If we, Every time you receive preaching or teaching from the word of God, every time you allow the word of God to come into your eyes, into your ears, uh, stop seeing it as as just information. Hmm. Uh, you know, people tell us often that was a really good talk. Great, great talk. Uh, we're not just talking, <laughs> but take the word of God for what it is. What it is, it is a creative force to make a man complete. The Bible says, uh, so it's creating all the time, and it is cutting things off. It it's a hammer that smashes things that shouldn't be there right uh, like like big boulders that that keep your field of the heart from being productive and fruitful it it breaks down walls uh, but most of all if we can go back to genesis chapter one we see that god created everything by his word john 1 1 you want to read that again in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god and, and nothing was made except for by the word of God. <laughs> and all things were made for him and by him. And without okay. him, nothing exists. And he upholds all things by his word. Even right now, all the, you can go outside here in, in Washington. We can go outside the sky. You know, when it's clear, you can see so many stars. You know, they'd be all dropping. They would all be imploding or exploding, whatever would be happening. Every molecule in the world would be doing uh, something other than what it's doing right now. It's held together by the word of God. So when we're releasing not our opinions, but the word of God, what the word of God says about your situation, about your life, about your future, about your health, that is the same word that created everything. And so that's a powerful thing. If you can receive it that way, you know, the receiving mode is one of the most important things that you can ever focus on. Jesus said that if you receive a prophet in the name of a prophet, not as Joe, my brother-in-law, but prophet Joe, <laughs> come on, then, then you will receive the prophet's reward. What is that? Illumination into the will of God, direction, instruction, exhortation, comfort. Uh, if you receive uh, a disciple in the name of a disciple instead of, oh, she's just, you know, my buddy, she's just my bestie, or she's just somebody that I don't really like to talk to, uh, there's no benefit in that. But if you receive a person as a disciple of Jesus, you receive the disciple's reward. What is that? That means that the whole body builds itself up. You will leave that conversation built up. And so... Uh, it's important how we receive, uh, and I want to talk about that today. How do we receive information right now? We have a lot of information available to us. This is the age of information. Uh, this is not the age of, well, what are the other ages? You know, uh, there were middle ages. Those were awful. Um, <laughs> you know, the age of uh, industrial, yeah, the industrial ages. ages, you know. But this is the age that we're living in is the age of information. Yeah. And the, the Lord had already predicted that, that in the last days, knowledge would increase. Uh, but then also that knowledge would fail people. The wisdom of this world would fail them. The things will, would be coming that this world will have no answer for. But ta-da, we do. Because <laughs> we have God who has the answer to everything. And so, but how you receive information is very important because information, just as, as Pastor Tracy just said, uh, information can be your doom or it can be your opportunity, right? So you can say, oh my goodness, you know, everything is horrible. Or you can say, this is my opportunity. 
This is my mom to shine. We need all hands on deck. I was made for this. You know, if we can uh, receive this information as supernatural intelligence, you know, that's how I feel. <laughs> I feel like I get intelligence by, uh, by hearing things and then I, I receive intelligence from the Lord and how to, uh, how to respond to it. You know, if you can see yourself as the army of the Lord, not only a Christian, but the army of the Lord, then all information that comes to you can be used as intelligence. It can be used as information that will cause you to respond in a proper way. And so today, the Lord was talking to me about joy. He was talking to me about um, the effect of joy on our health. And, you know, we can yeah. pray for your healing. We can do that over and over and over. But if your heart is not full of joy, if you are leaning towards negativity, negative talk, uh, negative perspectives, uh, you know, seeing things and people in negative light, seeing the future in a negative light, uh, seeing all th sorts of things in a negative light, then you, you the, the virtue that was released to you by the elders, by people praying for you, by believers praying for you, by you praying, by you reading scriptures, by you binding and loosing, it has a very short expiration date. And so we want to make sure that we sustain life inside of us by receiving information around us through the filter of the joy of the Lord, who is our strength. We have got to have joy. And, you know, joy in this world is very fickle. It is only based on good news and b good fortune. Uh, it's not based on, well, it's even based on, oh, the holidays are coming, right? People are starting to get a little bit more joyful. Other people hate it, so they become, you know, gringy. Uh, but but we, uh, we don't need to have joy in that way. Our joy should not be coming from external sources right. jesus said that very clearly and that's easier said than done if you don't understand how you can actually drink from this well of joy joy that's inside of you you have that well in there all the time you know most of us have seen you know those movies uh of old timers you know settlers in america i can use that example where they did have to dig deep and they would build you know with stone around the hole uh, and then it would be, they would have like a little bit of a wooden construction over, over the wooden hole with a rope attached to it in a bucket and this handle on the side, right? And so they let the bucket all the way down, down, down. And depending on how shallow the well is, <laughs> how little, right? How, 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 how deep you have to go. It takes forever. <laughs> to let that rope down, down, down to get a little bit of water to come back up. But if that well is full and it's just brimming with, with life, with, with, with good water, then you just, you know, you see little kids in movies, they just plop that bucket right in there and you can hear the, the, you know, splash. And then they just pull, you know, pull the bucket with a couple of circles of the rope and it's right there and they're drinking from it from the spoon you know i see this whole whole movie in my mind probably lassie or something <laughs> lassie. that was something i was Good allowed kid. to Good watch kid, help boy. I know. or the waltons yeah, was it a girl, girl yeah. of course because oh, yeah, oh, yeah. lad is is a boy in irish yeah. lassie, lassie is a girl okay so um but I want to read a few scriptures to you because joy it seems so underrated to me. You know, joy, you know, people feel often in the world that joyful people are just shallow people, that they really don't know what's going on, how bad things really are. But uh, joy is, is, comes from the intelligence of God. It is a life force. It is something that comes from within. It doesn't come from external. It doesn't come from buying more things or for having enough money or, you know, everything, every situation is perfect right now or oh, we have a big party coming up. None of that. Or my pictures on Instagram work, turned out really well. You know, I have a lot to brag about. No, that's not real joy. And that is not going to do what joy is supposed to do. So 
Point number one is it's important how you receive information. It has to be filtered through different filters. And one of those filters is the joy of the Lord. Hmm. Now, what is the joy of the Lord? Uh, let's look in, in Proverbs 17, 22 first. It says, a happy heart or a joyful heart is good medicine. Hmm. Wow, that's that's amazing. So when you have joy inside and you're, you're take you know taking your bucket into the well of joy you have issues of life on the inside as a child of god then you can you can drink of that joy and it is medicine to you okay. actual medicine but a broken spirit dries up the bones man i have seen a lot of people who have broken spirits and they all have bone problems yeah. It's very intense. You know, some are bent over. Some have to have hip replacements. Uh, there's just something that happens to the negative chemicals or uh, even the things that your brain releases when there's no joy in your life that actually has an effect on your bones. It makes them brittle. It makes them dry. It dries the bones. Now that you know that's a bad situation. I, I just saw a program a few weeks ago of uh, some British people that were all in their hundreds. 105, 107, 103, and they were walking around their house as straight as an arrow. Come on, they were not bent over, not stooped over, not weak looking. I, I, it's hard to believe that this 107 year old man, he looked like he was in his early 70s. He was just walking around, he wasn't having any problems, and he had so much joy. He was constantly looking forward to things, and he was constantly talking about how blessed he was and how many wonderful things he had encountered in life. But mind you, he'd gone through World War I, he'd gone through World War II, he'd gone through the Great Depression, he'd gone through a lot of things in the UK, and yet he was full of joy. It was his disposition that he chose. And he kept talking about how he chose joy. He chose to look at things in a positive light. He said, my wife, I loved her. We were complete opposites. She was always pessimistic. So they asked, well, when did she pass away? She passed away in her 70s. Can you imagine? That's like almost 40 years earlier than him. And he's just ticking along because he's full of joy. Okay, so this, this scripture is a powerful scripture, Proverbs 17, 22. Then also there's a Proverbs 18, verse 14. And we're reading from the Book of Wisdom. The spirit of a man can endure his sickness, but as for a broken spirit, who can bear it? Now, this, this uh, original Hebrew for merry means joyful, happy, full of cheer. Full of cheer. Not a little bit, but full of cheer. And the heart of a person is your, your, your inner thoughts, your inner decision-making, your inner uh, uh, feelings, your emotions on the inside, your heart, your heart is constantly springing forth something. It's amazing. It's, it's issues, the rivers, rivers of life. They also come bubbling up and the Holy Spirit baptizes, baptizes you on the inside. Yeah. You have a whole new river flowing from the inside. It's amazing. And so, but a joyful heart is good medicine. And, and if a, the spirit of a man is broken, then he cannot bear even his sickness. That's an amazing thing. That's, a, that's an intense thing. So two people can go through the same illness, but one of them chooses joy. The other one chooses uh, just despair and have, having a broken spirit, and that one cannot bear it. You know, I don't know if you ever saw that. Did we see that together, that comedy of a person who had cancer in the hospital and he ended up choosing... I already know I didn't see it. No, it was a comedy. No, it was great. It. No. Um, I? I don't, I don't so. know. But uh, maybe I watched it with my mom. But it was so funny. I mean, tears laughing because this man had heard about how laughter is good medicine. And so he was like, I'm going to choose that for my medicine. And he did pranks on everybody. He did all sorts of things. He would watch comedies all day long and he got completely healed. 
And of course, science backs this up. A joyful person is such a repellent to sickness and disease. It's a, it's a very intense virtue uh, that, that is released. Now, uh, there is a, let me see where this is. This is the American College of Cardiology um, of Harvard Medicine and John Hopkins. They have demonstrated that the mind's powerful influence over the body, such as a cheerful, contented temperament, not only fortifies our mental health, but enables us to resist physical disease. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Those are three different uh, studies that were done. So uh, the American College of Cardiology, Harvard Medicine, and John Hopkins. They all found this out. And of course, we knew it already from the scripture, but I love it when science confirms it, yes. right? Which they can only confirm it. But it, ev it, it gives you a resistance to physical illness. Uh, on the other hand, I've read lots of studies on fear, and you have, you've done that too. You've read about that, that these same colleges uh, of medicine and universities have studied fear, and fear opens up your pores. It's really an intense thing. So when you have fear instead of joy, which is very confident, when you have fear, your pores open, and actually receive, receive disease easier. People that are fearful get sick more quickly. Now, since since um, since we have these scriptures, we we're pretty much convinced. Okay, we gotta have joy. We gotta have more joy. But how do we do that? And you know, the Lord was talking to me uh, in this context about David when he was in Ziklag. And things were very bad. His, the wives of, the, of his soldiers and him, his mighty men, were taken. They were kidnapped. And his children, all of their children, they had taken everything. The pots and the pans when David and his men were out uh, on a mission. And so when they came back to their camp, everyone and everything was gone. And the men got angry. They were all distraught. They blamed David uh, that if we had been here, it would not have happened. You and your, you know, stupid missions. And, <laughs> and so here, David was completely distraught. But the Bible says that he encouraged himself in the Lord. Now, that's a powerful thing because that's so empowering. It doesn't say that God came and encouraged him. It doesn't say God sent an angel to encourage him. He does that too. But here it says that David encouraged himself in the Lord. How do you do that? How do you stir up encouragement? How do you stir up peace? How do you stir up joy? How do you stir up the issues of life uh, from this deep well that we have that is our heart, our spirit? It is by taking your eyes, first of all, off of the circumstances. Secondly, you take your eyes off of yourself and now you put your eyes only on God and it takes some mental exercising, you know, when you haven't done that or you don't do that very much, it takes some discipline. It's like exercising your brain power to go every time you want to think back at the situation, you go, no, we're not doing that. I'm thinking about the Lord. I'm setting my mind on the things above. Right? That's, that's what Jesus said. Set your mind on the things above. Uh, we need to th set our minds on the kingdom of God. If you seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness, everything else will be added to you. And then Paul says, if you uh, set your minds on the things above where Christ is seated, that's where all the power comes from. All the virtues of God. Now Jesus said, uh, be of good cheer for I have overcome the world. You'll have tribulations. I'm not going to say, okay, once you belong to my kingdom, once you enlist in my army, once you're a child of my father, uh, everything's going to be skittles and rainbows and peaches, right? No. Uh, but he says you will have tribulations, but be of good cheer. We have to be of good cheer because there's victory in the Lord. He has already overcome everything. 
and when we're with him we have overcome everything so so it's important for us and I want to encourage you in this to start adding the discipline in your life of first of all taking your eyes off of yourself stop thinking about how everything affects you the most miserable people always think through the filter if something happens someone says something something is occurring how is it affecting me okay that's the fastest way to lose your joy but instead uh set your mind on the lord who he is what he's done in the past how faithful he is how mighty he is how good he is and the second discipline i want to challenge you to is to start becoming a person who sings <laughs> a lot of people don't sing but it's important that you have a song you know the bible says that the way we become full of the holy spirit is by singing hymns spiritual songs even one to another <laughs> we don't do many musicals in our house but come on sing to yourself at least uh, sing about the lord when i wake up in the morning and I, maybe i ate something or I didn't sleep enough or we've been traveling and the pillow wasn't very nice or whatever maybe i had bad news the day before or some things are not quite broken through yet that i want to see happen you can wake up with kind of like a low feeling you know and and the the it's like the day kind of looks grayish but you can either just continue in that mode for the rest of the day or you can do what david did you can start encouraging yourself in the Lord. You can start saying things or and singing things uh, like he who promised is also faithful to complete it. Yes. Come on, that's an exciting thing. If you have a promise about faithful. something, he's the one that's faithful to also complete it. If you have a prophecy about something, then encourage yourself. He's the one who's faithful to complete it. So this is exciting. It doesn't just give a promise and then forget about it. He's now actually going to finish it. He's going to, his commitment in giving a promise is also his commitment to establish it and to do it and to finish it. And I love that about the Lord. That's a scripture that I used this morning to magnify the Lord and to start singing to him. And then, you know, I, I put on some worship and I had a good time. I mean, it was hard for me not to laugh out loud. Come on. And so I want to encourage you that your physical health is also determined by how you filter things. So if things come at you, immediately put the filter of worship, praise, and joy there. Uh, encouraging yourself in the Lord. Digging into that well of joy. Letting that, that well bubble up. You know, it should be a, a life spring. It should not be a stagnant dead body of water where the mosquitoes like to lay their eggs in come on it should be bubbling up and the way that happens is by every day causing joy to spring up in you and that that joy daily bubbling up of joy is going to ensure that you live long uh you you your your health is going to be restored your bones will still be young and and strong uh, it causes you to start saying good things, filling your mouth with good things, so your youth is renewed, right? And so there's a lot of amazing things, and even John Hopkins says says so. Come on, that's pretty amazing <laughs> when the world John. agrees <laughs> with the Bible. I love that so much. And so understand, yes, we're going to release virtue in Jesus' name today, but make sure you keep that virtue and and build upon that virtue by 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 pumping up joy in the lord every single day setting your mind on him his promises and adding singing to it and that will make you strong so good and that's i love what i love about this is that it's not reliant on someone else it's no. totally your own your own well yeah so if you think you have an empty well then this of course you think this is challenging but if you feel like that there is somewhere the holy spirit has filled you and he's deep there you may just have to purge him up, you know, <laughs> yeah. dig him up, dig him up, dig him up, pull up, pull up. Then, you know, the Bible says spring up, oh well. But you're going to have oh, to yeah. some, somehow get that spring to move. Mm -hmm. you got to prime the pump. you got to get it going and realize that the, there's it's, it's not that there is no water there. You just have allowed things to cover it. 
Oh yeah. And so if you will, uh, if you will with God and make sure that you, you, you have that well uncovered, the Holy Spirit lives inside of you. If you've asked them to come and live inside of you, if you don't, if you've never asked him to come and live inside of you, it's simple. You just ask him to come and live inside of you. Now, if you say, well, it's just so hard. I don't have any joy. Well, the Bible says that Jesus came and he said, my joy, I give to you. Yes. So even if you didn't have joy, if you've asked Jesus to come inside of you, he brings his joy to you. Yes. And what he says is my joy, I, I give to you. And now that means it doesn't matter if you lack joy, if there's no circumstantial joy in your life, there's no reason to be joyful. The whole world is falling apart. But if you have Jesus, that means you have joy. And that joy is inside of you. And so stir it up. Stir yes. up the joy. Spring up the joy. Get the joy going and manifest the joy. But you have to realize I, there's joy inside of you. Even though if your mind is going, oh, I feel so down. There, there's a woman that's, that's, that, that's communicating. She's, she's like, I'm, I'm dying. I just want to die. I just want to die. Anna, I think is her name. I want to tell you, Anna, that there's just, you know, I think she sent a private message. Okay. Uh, I th there is no, there is no, no, there's no lack of joy in you. And circumstances is, that's not a reason to die. No. Circumstances is not they a reason to die. All the time. Yeah. Circumstances, you'll be happy next year. You'll be happy a year from now. Yeah. You'll be happy two years from now. You'll be happy. You'll, you'll find, you'll, you'll get everything you want. You, you know, you're, all the things that you there will be things that will come that will change your mind about what you feel today. So don't make a permanent decision by a temporary moment. Know that there's yes. joy that is eternal joy. Now, when Jesus says, my joy, I give to you. Just That's crazy. beautiful. Yeah, I mean, joy, Jesus' joy, he never lacked joy for any circumstance. Huh. Yeah. For every circumstance, Jesus had joy. And that joy is down inside. And so you have to... Get the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. The joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Down in my heart to stay. Stay forever. Forever, eternal, forever and ever and ever. This joy is faithful, yes. fulfilled, yes. complete. And he says that my joy should be in you and that you, your, the joy in you should be full. Complete full joy. joy. Yeah. So, so it's really, it's based upon your decision. It's based yes. upon your decision making. As my wife is teaching, I'm thinking about this, this, this term, point of no return. Oh, the point of no return is is a, something that they use in flights, right? You, 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 if you're taking off, and you're flying <laughs> to a destination, there's a line that you cross. That you cross it. It's literally, t it's more important that you keep going forward than it is to turn back because you don't have enough fuel to make it back to where you came from. Yeah. So you only have enough fuel to go forward, to go forward in where you are. So there's a point of no return in this kingdom of God. Yes. There's a point where it's, it takes too much energy to go backwards. It takes too much energy for me to backslide. I, I it just, yeah, it just, I mean, it's that. like so much energy. It's just so much energy, so much fuel being used up to try to set up and then you've, you're so far into this life that you have to now try to play games. Right? It's just so much fuel, so much energy, the point of no return. And so you, you should know that there's a point where you have so much joy fuel in you. And, and that joy fuel is used for this next level yeah. of journey. That, what, did, what did he say to Elijah? Was it Elijah? Elijah? That, that you, know, you have to drink and you have to, you have to eat for the journey ahead of you is, yes. is too much for you. Yeah. It's too much for you on the level of fuel that you have. So yeah. you can stir up this fuel, get your fuel gauge lit up again yeah. by tapping into the joy. I love that yeah. joy. Joy, yeah. joy, joy, joy. It's very important. And it's not a shallow thing. It's very powerful. Well, it's extremely powerful because, you know, there's more than just that one. But there's a, it's a part of the, the, you know, when they're, I think it's the Cancer Research the Institute. Institute that they literally, like you said, they have it in their in their 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 things of recovery wow their treatment policy their treatment policy wow. so wow. you you have this you have you have treat uh, chemo you have this and then laugh therapy is one of them and so they're getting so many more people healed because of their their overall holistic yes. approach to it yes. so when you know that there is something that your body's your body's made up for this your body's made for that yes. your emotions are made for that but i wanted to just hear i want you to hear this my wife sharing that there, there is not one person, no matter how you feel, no matter how many emotions that are inside, no matter 
what's going on? There's enough joy inside of you because Jesus gave you his. Yeah. So if you say, I don't possess it, it's in you. It is. It's in you. It's it, in you. Just it, dig. In you. Dig for it. Dig for it. Yeah. I want to talk about um the, the maybe the persistence or the, the contending or the kind of energy it's needed to get healed. Because I think there's some oh, people yeah. there, you're waiting for something to passively hit you. Mm -hmm. And I think even stirring this joy is not passive. No, it's it a, takes work. It's a, it's a, like... it's a, it's a, it's something that needs to happen. And so, right. I think when we are passive, in any aspect, we are relying on what we see, and not as much on what we know. Mm -hmm. In Luke chapter seventeen, just reading real quick, we're going to read about you know five, six, four verses, just expound on them a little bit. And I just want to encourage you that there is something better than just seeing. The whole goal of what's happening in the earth is, is making sure that you see what they want you to see. So if you watch the news, they put on the specific, the specific images to make sure that it endorses the agenda of whatever they want you to believe. Right. And it doesn't mean that you, and, and you can see something and it allows you to frame in what you think it is, mm -hmm. and then they won't tell you any different, right? They just, they will use these images. We've seen in the past where there is, uh, whether they all get the same possibility of using these images from the same place. We saw the same person who was blamed in the bomb in Boston also blamed in a shooting in somewhere else. Yes. And we're like, okay, so if that person died, then how can they also be the bomber? Yeah. It's like there's 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 a there's a there's optics in yes. it's something that you need to be concerned with because the devil's strategy is to make sure that you are you are given into optics. Yeah. The strategy of falling into sin from the original sin of the of of Eve is she saw that the food on the tree was good for food and the fruit was good for fruit. Well, God never told her that tree was good for food, but she saw and she saw that it was something to make. So it was her optics. Yeah, it was what the devil didn't even say. Hey, this is good food. He he just he just played with her mind, and it's about what you see. So be yeah. careful of what you see. Yeah. And I know that we say seeing seeing is believing, but I want you to know seeing is not believing. Uh, we were listening to science and a science scientist today, and they were like, "Well, I believe this. I believe these facts. I believe these facts. I believe these facts." And they believe the facts simply because they can see. They saw a little jaw of a of a of a deformed something, right? That's that's the whole thing about uh, what's it? Lucy, I think her name is them. The 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 they called it the um, four. Bombers. The missing link. I think her name was Lucy. Yeah. Well, when they dug down into it, they found out that these bones were found so many different distances apart from each other that they could no longer be. They could no long, no way that they could be associated to the same person, same thing, same mammal, same thing. But they pulled, pieced them together, and they created this missing link, this Lucy. Yes. And you have to understand that there's this this, and because they found a, a little bit of evidence. They believe the evidence instead of believing something, you know, that it's more, it's, it's impossible. They believe it's right. possible because, and they, they, I remember watching once they found that Lucy and they said, well, we think that her actually, the head is a deformed uh, monkey that, yeah. that had down, you know, had some kind of, yeah. you know, chromosome issue. Yeah. And so they are, they're now piecing together this thing mm -hmm. that's actually just a diseased one. Yeah. It's like one out of like, you, you would, if it was, it would be a lot. Right, it'd be a lot right, more. Right. At least be two. Right. Because <laughs> you can't get this transition. You can't make a rule out of you, one. You'd thing. at least have two because you need a, fa a male and a female to continue the species, right? Oh, yeah. So you at least need to have two. Yes. And they most likely would be together. Yeah. And if they're together, then you would have three or four little babies. Yes. You'd see that somewhere else, right? You just stop being stupid. Anyway, I was listening to the guy, so I got a little energetic about it, too. Anyway, so I want you to know optics. <laughs> optics don't interpret what you see don't interpret things by what you see because this yes. is what this whole thing is about they'll show you all of these people sick with breathers on and they probably just put them on to take the picture right they'll show you all these major things but the fact is and there's true it's true people are having challenges but the yeah. fact is the kingdom of god doesn't come in the same way the yes. kingdom of god doesn't come by some obvious thing look what it says in verse 12 of luke 17 it says then he said then he entered into this a certain village and there met him 10 men who were lepers who stood far off. Now, this is what I want you to understand about why we, how people go to Jesus for healing. They stand far off. <laughs> they stand far off. At least they, they, I want you to know proximity, 
your approach to God, you're getting close to God. If you want to get healed, get close to him. Yeah. If you want to be healed, be a person oh, of prayer. Yeah. If you want to be healed, be a person of worship. You. If you want healing, go near to him. He's coming in the city and there stood these people far off, these four, 10 men far off going, you know, they, they want, and all of a sudden they lifted up their voices. At least they start crying. Yeah, they yeah. start crying out to him. They start reaching out. They reach out to Jesus with their voice. Master, have mercy on us. So when they saw him, he said to them, go show yourself to the priest. I love this. I was reading this and I thought this is so great because this weekend when we were in, in Yakima, which we had a powerful time in Yakima, yes, so much wonderful. fun we with Breakthrough it. Church. Yes. I think it's really super powerful Jennings church. The Jennings and, and uh, you know, Brian and Carrie Jennings, so much, so much power, yes. so much, so much authority there. And uh, it was, it was great because there was in an evening service, they called a spontaneous service on, on, yes. on, on October 31st. 31st. Because yes, we were just going to hang out anyway. So they said, well, they can we not have a service? Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's have a service. And so this woman comes. I actually had a word of knowledge for some uh, people who have back pain. Lower back pain, just kind of center of the back, mm -hmm. almost the tailbone, if I remember right. Mm -hmm. And uh, three people stand up. One, uh, one, one, two of them were a couple. So I had them come up, stand together. And then all of a sudden, I just felt like, well, you were healed. And I just felt like just a snap with no saying anything you're healed. Just, just snap. Okay. Move your body. And she's looking at me like, well, all you did was slap, snap at me. She was you didn't, waiting. She was waiting for some kind of do it, do it now. Do it right. Right. But it was just a snap because there's a, <laughs> the, the world of the spirit is different than the world of the natural. The natural does things to be seen. The world of the spirit doesn't have to be seen. It doesn't have to do anything to be seen. No. It's actually better to be heard. Because yeah. if this the language of the spirit is vibration. The language of the spirit is 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 it's it's it yes, I'm better best description I have is vibration. And so, you know, that, that snap was enough. We just snap, no statement. I said, now check your back. Mm -hmm. And she check your back and your hip. And she's she's going, mm -hmm. it's gone. Oh, it's gone. Mm -hmm. I love that because this is what Jesus does here. He these people are crying, they're off on the side, and they're saying, Jesus, have mercy on me. Can you imagine the dramatic imagery? It's awful. Jesus just is walking down the street, walking down the street. He's just minding his own business. All of a sudden, you have ten people off lepers. lined up, ten lepers, you know, bandaged, bandaged up. One party has his finger wrapped up. Well, you know, who doesn't know? Yeah. They're all bandaged up. They're looking. You know, they obviously Leper can't coach. come close because they have leprosy. Yeah, and they're staying. They're staying a distance. Yeah, but I want you to know, Jesus is 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 wanting you to come near. Yeah. and so as as they're then then they start yelling, Jesus. Son of David, have mercy, mm -hmm. have mercy on me. And he simply just looks at them and says, go show yourselves to the priest. He didn't say a prayer. He didn't do anything. He didn't do anything. He just. He's doing nothing for optics. He's doing nothing for people to see him. He's doing, and this is what this age is really stirred up on. Everything's about what's visually happening, what's visually taking place. Visually, right? If the church has multiple, multiple thousands and thousands of people, then of course that's a great church. Then they're powerful. Yeah, but if you go to a service where there's five people and one person gets healed of leprosy, that's not very powerful, right? So you have to know that optics. Jesus is just standing there, and I love what he does. He, he it's, 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 it's even better than snapping your finger. Oh, yeah. It's better because he because just he acts like it was already done. It's like, yeah, he just without says, doing no, it. without doing anything. <laughs> he didn't do anything. He didn't say, I will have mercy on you. Please take a step forward as I have mercy on you. Mm -hmm. Watch my face of mercy. He didn't say any of those things. He just simply says, he just said when he saw them, when he saw them, he didn't even say when he heard them. He's working. When he saw them, he said to them. Go show. Now that's that. That's the optics again. You, the only way you're going to get breakthrough is you have to go show yourself to someone. Go show yourself to the priest. And so it was. As they went, they were cleansed. So they had to believe yes. before they even saw. Yes. As it were, they had to. They had to go walking away, going. They still had everything. But they the same. they had in every intention to go to the priest. They did. They obeyed because. I mean, they probably had heard testimonies. Yeah, right? and we have to realize this is the one who heals the sin. It's realized it's you're acting like Jesus has already done it before you see the 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 white patches go away. Yes. Before you know, you know, I want to say to, uh, I don't know, she is she she wasn't feeling well at ten ten. She has a 
she wasn't filled. I want to just say, you know what? Before you before you see the results, there's a point of no return where you've got to go, I'm getting into this place and I'm getting healed. And if I have to crawl to the phone, if I have to crawl to, if I have to put my face next to the, to whatever it is, there's a point of no return. And I'm going to use all the fuel that I have because getting back in bed is not enough. Doing the normal, what I normally do and letting this thing run its course is not enough. And I'm not trying to be offensive, but I'm trying to be stirring. Yeah. That these people had to say when they were walking off, they could go, dudes, what are we doing walking to the priest? You know what they're going to do to us when we get to the priest? Right. Do you know what they're going to say when we get there and we're all like this? They're going to pronounce to us again that we're unclean because the only way that they, for them to get the special outfits right. and to get kicked out of the city, they had to go to there and be, have a pron and be pronounced. Leper. We see you. We see by the observation, we see you're a leper. So go. Go outside the city. Here's your special begging coat. Go do this. Go outside the city. Go over there into your special mm -hmm. leper colony. And you have to see this. They're going back to the ones that saw it. And they still have, they still look exactly the same. Yeah. They still look exactly the same. And yet Jesus says one thing, not based upon sight. He says, go and act like you're not sick anymore. Go over there and get, have them get that second opinion and change their mind. And as they go, I love this. This is a beautiful about Jesus. And I wish we had this kind of Jesus on the earth right now. I wish we actually believed as the church. I'm not saying he's not. I'm saying I wish that we believed as the body of Christ. Because most people that I hear from the church, they're just acting like, you know what? We got to keep going to the same priest and they're going to keep telling us we need another shot or we need another this or we need another that. Yeah. I'm not going to those. Anyway. In the name of the Bible, I'm going to go to the dish. I'm going to go to the dish. I got to just let that go for a second. Turn it around. Yeah, let it go. Turn it let, let it go. Let that go out before something else comes up. So it was that as they went, they were cleansed. As they were walking, as they were walking. Can I encourage you? The way you get your healing is walk like you are already healed. That's right. The way you possess your healing is walk like you're already healed. The way you possess that joy inside of you, laugh like you're already healed. People thought it was crazy when I wrote The Art of Joy. And one of the key components of the art of joy is just laughing on purpose. Just be, yes. just laugh on purpose. You'll find that yes. you can't ignore it. First, you'll start laughing at yourself because you're trying it. It's so odd. You go, <laughs> and you're like, I can't believe I'm trying this. But what you're doing is you're doing what the lepers do. You're you're walking you're towards your me. you're walking towards your victory. You're walking towards your healing. You're walking towards your deliverance. And the closer you get to it, the more healed you are. Every step that you get to that, 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 that announcement that I'm healed, that I'm delivered, you start to convince yourself. And the more you're convinced, the more your body will align. If you start, if you act sick, if you stay sick, if you stay in the realm of sickness, that's why my father-in-law would say, listen, we're going to pray for you. You're going to wash your face. Yeah. And then get when you dressed. get up and you go get dressed and you go out and play. Go play outside. Why? Because your body is going to agree that Jesus has already healed you. Your body is, uh, is, is, is only as stubborn as you think it can be. It can't be completely stubborn because it's, it's, your body is literally passive. That's why the study says that if you are negative, it opens your pores to receive sickness. Yeah. It's not because your body's like, I'm thinking about this and I'm going to do this. Your body literally listens to your soul. Yes. And they, David, David, David so much taught us that. Yeah. We bless the Lord with our soul and our soul opens up everything else. And so if you, realize, right and if you realize that your body, if you say, well, I have, a, I have a hard time getting healed. I'm very hard to get healed. Then guess what? Your, your body, body goes, to your body closes up on everything. Stimulus your body closes up on every aspect. Negative it's so difficult. Release. And that's why we spend a lot of time going, okay, let's talk about this. This is easy to get healed. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you about the person that just got healed over there. And what, every story, every kind of testimony, where what we're doing is we're convincing that person's soul that they are that healing happens and then they go yeah but mine's different i've been living it then we have to deal with that we have to deal with the idea because it's only their soul that's holding the body from getting healed yes. it's their soul it's yes. a soul issue it's not yes. a body issue the healing is not a physical i mean it's physical but it's as much physical as you tolerate it right it's your spirit it's your soul that must align if you have a strong spirit and a strong soul you can actually just get up. And there's a lot of people, in, in, if you've studied cancer, you'll find that a lot of people overcome cancer just by willing it. 
willing that they're going to overcome it. Just willing, people. just deciding. This is I'm not taking this. me out. I'm beating this. I'm going to see my life. I'm going to finish. And then they're not calling on God at all. They're, and it's not a placebo. It's a will. It's the will of man. It's the will of God. And God says the things that we birth in the earth are coming to the earth because we have will. It's the will of man. And if your birth is birthed by the will of the Father. Yes. It's, birthed by, it's, by, it's birthed by the will. And so we have to know that we use our will all the time. Yes. And what Christians do, we passively wait and we don't use our will. We passively wait. Yes. Instead of being like these men that are standing there off on the side and they're using your will. Son of David, have mercy on us. Yes. Don't pass us by. That's yeah, their will too. calling out. <laughs> That's the will of a person saying, listen, I will to be healed. Yeah. And I'm going to I'm going to call out. I'm going to be I'm already embarrassed over here. Why should I be quiet now? I'm do you see what I'm wearing? I might as well yell. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like I might as well yell. Yeah. Ah! Stop that's ghetto. Stop yelling. You don't know what's ghetto. I beg every day. I drag myself over here and sit down there and you don't know I'm in sore and pain. That's that's ghetto. But what me yelling right now for mercy? That's not ghetto. That's for me using my will to get some breakthrough. All right. I'm so someone needs to use the will, Susan. Come on, stir it up. Yeah, I'm getting free from this. Decide. This is not my destiny. This is not who I am. This is not what I'm supposed to walk in and live in. Come on, Anna or Ann. This is not what I'm supposed to live in. This is not my purpose. This is the devil dragging me up and down the road. I'm not going to allow the devil to drag me around when Jesus is walking by me. Jesus is walking by, kumbaya, and I want you to know it's time for you to yell out. Let it yell. Yes. You're in your house by yourself. Yell out. Jesus, have mercy on me, son of David. I mean, yell yes. out, get some yeah. energy in you and stir it up and refuse to allow the devil to keep confusing your, your life with his. He's a loser and you're not. You're, you're the not. victorious person yeah. that's supposed to keep on walking. So as they're walking it out in faith, you got to step it out in faith. Just walk like it's going to hurt. There's another lady that came up, one lady, she came up, she, the Lord said, I want to heal ligament. She was on the second row, and she had a little cane. I said, come on up here with you with the ligament thing. And, you know, we pray. And, and broken bone in her ankle. Broken bone and, and, and torn, ligament. Mm -hmm. and, oh, torn ligament. And so she she's like, she's got, she got this thing on her foot. And she got this, you know. Mm -hmm. And we're like, okay, let's pray. I don't even remember how we did all the prayer. I just know that, you know, Sydney... Sydney came up and laid hands on her. She got yes, healed. Yes, she did. It was powerful. Yes, it was wonderful. And I think this really, and but the thing is, is I'm like, okay, so listen, I, she's like, hey, she's real timid. I'm like, okay, don't hurt yourself, but put a little bit more pressure, put a little more on it. Let's see what you feel like. Ooh, I said, okay, go now, go to the place where it hurt again. Now it is a new level. It's a new level. And I said, okay, now let's believe God. And we, we were doing a rocket ship thing at that point. We're in five, four, three, two, one. Because she said she was trying to fly off of stairs. That's how she hurt herself. <laughs> so we were using this flying analogy. And so she got to that point. goes, oh, it's hurt there. And I go, okay, let's do it again. Five, four, three, two, one. And then she got a little bit more room. What are we doing? We're, we're doing the same things that these people are doing. They're, she's walking into her healing. Believing she's walking into her healing. Mm -hmm. She's not walking back into her pain. We just walked around and I said, okay, now listen, listen, what I want you to do is I want you to hold the cane a little bit more and I want you to see if it can put some more, ooh, there it is. Okay, great. Is it better? Yeah, it's better, but right there. Okay, that's that's what we're looking for. We want to get to that place that where point. resistance is happening. Some people don't want to get there. You got to push that envelope. You got to go, okay, this is where it is. We're going to take that next level of ground. So then she pushed it. We took that next level. Okay, now this is what I want you to do. I want you to try to walk with the cane. She's like a little apprehensive on that. She goes, well, I'll take a step. And she took a step. I'm like, okay, now she listen, like, I want to hold your hand and I'm going to keep releasing virtue. She's like, okay. Now it was encouraging because she knew it was, she thought it wasn't, she thought it wasn't just coming out of her. Right. But it was really just, she was just taking it and walking it by faith. So we walked a little bit, walked a little bit. And after a while, she wasn't even using my hand. And she goes, right. there's still a little bit of the tension right there in that one little spot, but That's the rest right. of it was healed. And so after a while, I just let it go. And she just starts walking without her cane. It's so good. And you know, just like Jesus said this to the to the lepers, go in and uh, show yourself to the priests because the priests were gonna then decide whether they were cleansed. They were gonna or pronounce, not. yeah. He said it as if it was done. Yeah, he just said go. And, and show. so, so that's what people would say to people when they thought they were healed that the issue is now gone. 
they would say, go show yourself to the priest because then you can be brought into the community. Yes. Well, this is what Jesus said in, for, in 1 Peter 2.24. We see that Peter says this. He, he takes the scripture of Isaiah 53 and he makes it past tense. Hmm. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness by his wounds you have been healed so it's the same exact thing it's past tense jesus is not going to take stripes in his body for us anymore he did and by those stripes we were healed and so now when we act on it we're doing just like this when jesus said go show yourself to the priest that's exactly it you get the you get the teacher and you get the prophetic sound so mm -hmm. there's the teacher and now here we go back to the prophetic sound. You need to start walking it out. Yes. <laughs> walk it out. Yes. Now you have the biblical pattern. Yes. You have the biblical truth of it. And now you have to walk it out. You have to actually yes. know that there, there's the education. What good is having an education if you don't act it out? You if you don't act actually it put it put into force. So here we go. Go show yourself to the priest. And it was, it was, so it was that they, as they went, they were cleansed. Now I want you to get this. They didn't sit there and contemplate. You didn't notice anything? You notice anything That's different? Us going. Hmm. I'm not I'm not going until I notice some change. It's not about optics. It was not about what you saw. Mm. It was not about what they felt. There, the pain was probably still there. The, you know, because there's it says as they went. Very important key statement. As they went, they were cleansed. Can I tell you, as you go, as you go into your next level, God's gonna open up doors. As you go into this next thing, God's gonna do it. As you go, as you went, well, you went. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Verse fifteen, and one of them, when he saw that he was he was healed, one of them returned with a loud voice and glorified God. Now he's he, I love that he's going to be just as loud in glorifying God as he was in calling for mercy. Yes, that's beautiful. Yes, may we actually if we actually could see the level. If we could actually meet God with our glory, glorifying his name to the level of he's, that he's been good to us, that we are crying out when we needed him. You know how you cried out when you wanted to get saved, when you really needed help. You're, ah, help me, Jesus. You're shameless. But then when we get saved and we get delivered and we're set free, now you're like. Mm. Right, passive. No, why don't we do this now at the same level that we cried out for help, cry out and praise you. The same level. They return. And he returned, and one, one of them, he was returned with a loud voice, <clears throat> glorified God, verse 16, and he fell down on his face at his feet and giving him thanks. And then when he saw Samaritan, he, wa and he was a Samaritan. When he saw he was a Samaritan, sorry. Uh, so Jesus answered and said, were there not 10 cleansed? Jesus knew. He, it's funny, he saw he was a Samaritan, that, that he's mixed in, in all of his culture that he said, were there not 10 cleansed, but where are they, where are the nine? And were there not any found who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? <clears throat> so the other ones obviously were Jews. Were Jews, and he was and the they Samaritan. they did not glorify him, <laughs> even though they were all cleansed. To much is forgiven, much is, much, to much is forgiven, much is required, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So he receives forgiveness. And he said to him, arise and go your way. Your faith has made you well. I, I just think that that's the step, the steps in faith. Walking as if you don't, don't wait until you see it. Don't wait until you feel differently to start walking differently. Just step into it. In verse 20, it says, and, and he asked the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come. And they answered and said, the kingdom of God does not come. He, uh, they asked him, when would the kingdom come? And he answered them and said, the kingdom of God does not come with observation he's not going to come by optics it's going to come it says nor will they see here or see there i love that nor will they say see here or see there so i i think what what i'm really because i've been asking i've been telling the lord in my, my complete um transparency i said lord we are in a we are in a deficit of the kingdom of god in the earth we have the world is so much dominating and the we are missing the kingdom of god because the way that the 
government is getting away with their what they're getting away with and what the devil's getting away with they're getting away with that that tells me that the king of glory and the kingdom of god is not the is not functioning it is dominant but it's not expressing the most dominant force on the earth yes. that they think they can get away with it and they are talking about see here and see there yes but i'm telling you that we need to know that there's something inside of us and the only reason the kingdom of god is not dominated dominant in the earth is because we're looking at there and we're looking at here instead of realizing for indeed the kingdom of god is within you yeah and many people look for the kingdom of god in other ministers yeah. but not within themselves and that's what jesus is saying and i'm telling you we need the kingdom of god right now we need the kingdom of God like now, right now, more than ever before. Yes. If we don't have a turn in this ship, if we don't have some kind of like turn in this ship, this this ship is going to run. Uh, this this ship is going to run aground, and it's not going to be good. It will. It'll be restored because there's a promise for America. There's a promise for America. But if we don't shift, if we don't turn this quickly. And that means with the kingdom of God, we need revivals breaking out all around the world. Everyone's running now on the streets and picketing and we're running the courts and we're, running, we're doing all that. That's great. We need to do as much of that as we possibly can. But not, not replacing the fact that we need an absolute move of God that shows that Jesus is Lord and Savior of this earth. And he paid the price for everyone. And I know that there's people that think that's ridiculous that we're still pushing in the revival. We get, I, I know we get mocked. For, for pushing, but I'm telling you, without the, this this week, my my meditation has been, may the knowledge, the experience, which is going to be the experience, the education, uh, the 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 ability to duplicate it and produce it, mm -hmm. of the glory of God be revealed. May the knowledge of the glory cover the earth. Be seen all over. Cover the earth. Mm -hmm. So that means everyone has encountered it. Everyone is knows about it. Everyone yeah. is experiencing and is seeing it. That there's no eye that's not experiencing it and we need to know that the glory of god we cannot we cannot just be just a church just waiting for jesus to come and get us out of here if there if it's anything like the noah's noah's ark yeah if there's anything like jesus god didn't come and save them god gave someone a deliverer a a revelation and said you build it and i feel like right now god's trying to give the church the revelation of how to build the glory Yes. in the earth because the glory is going to be the only thing that saves us yes i mean we're going to continually build homes and do all the stuff that we got to do and take care of orphans and feed the poor and all of that and we're, but the fact is we need the church to arise and become the most powerful force on the earth there needs to be a move of god mm. that brings the fear of the lord to the world yes. because the world does not fear god mm -hmm. the world does the church doesn't fear god mm -hmm. the church is literally irreverent the Excellent. church has no and we need and, and we need the fear of the Lord and the fear of the Lord is going to happen because we realize the king of glory lives inside of us wow, yes. and the kingdom of God is here. Yes. And we need to walk the earth like like those that are powerful, like those are dominant and mighty. Areas and of the king of and the I'm Lord. asking the Lord, I said, Lord, I need another level of glory and power. I need another level of kingdom. I need more of your kingdom in my life. Stepping I need more of the kingdom authority. Yeah, I need it. I, I don't feel like I have enough. And yet I want to step into more. I want to step into regions like we go into Yakima. I want Yakima to shift. I want the moment we walk in that the crime does, the, the crime goes down. I don't want demons yeah. to be like so stirred up that they start to do crazy stuff. I want them to I want them to run and go, shh, as long as he's in town. Just don't act up. Don't act up. And they won't know that. And you guys think here. I'm I know those people are gonna hear that, they're gonna think that's crazy. No, but that's, that's the true. that's what happens when a sheriff comes to town. That's what happens when someone who's been deputized. Someone who comes to town, it's like you know what it's like when you're driving down the road and you're going seventy miles an hour and all of a sudden you see something, a white car that looks like they are maybe a police police no, police you slow down. Be low. And I want the devil to know around me, you better slow down. You better yeah. hide. You better hide, and you better hide deeply into that person. Because the moment you show up, mm, yeah, you better crawl into that. Hole. The moment you show up, you better you're gonna realize that there is something coming after you. Don't rear your head. Don't you dare overstep yeah. your boundaries. I'm telling you right now, in the name of Jesus. Well, that's what we need to walk in. That kind of authority. We need to walk in this. You know, 
<laughs> we need to walk in that kind of authority in that kind of power of the Holy Spirit that is revealing the glory of God. Amen. Let the kingdom of God manifest. That's that and that's been talking. Mm -hmm. In the well, name of I'll, Jesus. One of our ministers will reach out to you right after you're done listening to this Thank message. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. We pray for soundness on Anne's life. Yes. Lord. And we, we pray soundness in your heart and your mind. May God show up and be manifest in your life. I'm Jesus. praying, church. Let's pray. I know this is curology, but I feel like the kingdom of God is here. Yes, and we want, the kingdom we, of God is within is us. Is within us. We have to stir it up and act on, act on it. Am I, and the question I have is at what point is the point of no return that you just don't play it safe anymore? Yeah. And you just have to go for it. Yes. You just have to go for it. Yeah, looking crazy, saying, sounding crazy, people mocking you, people. T what, at what point is it okay to look like Jesus? Because Jesus was, I mean, Jesus. If Jesus was walking around now, I mean, he would be. He was rebutted all. I mean, he day long. the the most famous people in the earth right at that time uh, challenged him, mm -hmm. and so you know, I just hope that we just we we represent him well. Yes. By not looking with optics, not look at your sickness, don't look at what's going on in the news, look at that person. I mean, I'm, it's the amount of people that are telling me, oh, this person's sick, this person. And we want to know that for, for prayer. But they're not telling me for prayer. They're telling me because this is what's in there. They're plagued with this stuff. Yeah. It's a plague in the mind right now. Yeah. People are plagued with, and, and the Lord, Lord told me last week, someone's reaction was a COVID brain. And I said, they have a COVID brain. What is that? And it's like they have a, they, they have a, a reaction that's happening in them. They're affected by a virus, and and I just I just uh, I'm like I can't stand it. We will pray for I'm like that this tonight. this is the we we bring, we bind that in the name of Jesus. Irrational decisions, yeah, in irrational decisions, decisions that don't have any kind of grounding in truth or reality. Yes, in the name of Jesus. Yes, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Yeah, that's that's okay. All right, so Father, we thank you for this. Let's just all uh, cry out to God right now for whatever you need. Be like those lepers right now and say, "Jesus, have mercy on me." And uh, He is He's still merciful. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Thank you, Father God. Rebo shendela masti antoninas. In the name of Jesus. Now, for you believers, we, we speak to the kingdom of God inside of you. We speak to the same resurrection power of the Holy Spirit who raised Jesus out of the grave and, and raised him up to the right hand of the Father in, in, the, in the heavens. Yes, that same power resides in you if the Spirit of God lives in you. And we speak to that. Right now, and you Thank speak you, to it and say, a spirit of resurrection, rise up within me now in Jesus' name. You quicken my mortal body. You quicken every cell. Put your hand on that part of your body that needs quickening, which means it needs resurrection life. It needs to be healed, restored, renewed. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Father God. Hallelujah. Rebo shendela mastai. Jesus is Lord. Reba Shanda. Any any other prayer requests? Yes, we have more. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Shabbat and I'm a cobbled de Bishti. We could have better the best. I did a big kid and I'm a kid. Thank you, Father God. I didn't see any. I just went through them all. Oh, okay. Well, praise the Lord. Tara we declare she was sick from her surgery. We by the stripes of Jesus name. Christ, you are healed. And those of you that have had COVID or, uh, you know, you've had medicine, whatever it is that has affected your brain, we're, we're hearing from a lot of people that are just having a fog. Uh, even their emotions are affected. They feel like they're numb in their emotions after they were affected by this COVID. We uh, release the virtue of God into you right now that clears the fog away, that clears the effect of this virus away, that clears the effect of the chemicals away right now in Jesus' mighty name. We release power and virtue into you in Jesus' name. 
So Father, we thank you, Lord, that the kingdom will, is arising. And tonight the, the com commission is joy and researching that joy, stirring it up, stirring up that joy. And the, the, the other revelation is that you should walk it out by faith. Walk it out by faith, live by faith, head to the victory. And as you head to victory, it will show itself as you move towards it. Jesus. Thank you yes. for that. We release the blessing. God, those of you that have to go in your rooms, God bless you. And, and we thank you, Father, that uh, Andrea, you we release healing to you for, against COVID. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, that you break that power. Yes. We thank you for the you swift turnarounds. Perfect. We thank you for prayer, uh, limp, limp, oh, lymphedema to be healed in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We release your power. We thank you, Father, for the glory of God that manifests in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you for doing this, Lord. In Jesus' name. All, and we ask for, we thank you, Father, for full recovery. Nothing, nothing missing, nothing broken for those who have walked through COVID and overcome it. Yes. That they have everything returned to them. Everything returned to them in Jesus' yes, name. Behold. Any, no lingering and leftover symptoms. We call it done in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Remember to stir up the joy, that beautiful fountain on the inside of you that will quicken you and stir up also that resurrection power of the kingdom of God that already lives inside of you. And if you uh, are not a child of God, you're far from God, you feel far from God, then you can reach out. Uh, to us, but you can just ask Jesus to come into your life, into your heart, to become your Lord and Savior, and He will. You know, most powerful prayers that I've heard is people that say, God, if you're real, then please come and reveal yourself, and He does. He loves us so much, and so we love you. We do this every Tuesday. You can go back to our previous Tuesdays as well if you scroll down. There's lots of uh, wonderful um wonderful teaching there in jesus name in jesus name amen amen blessings